There was once a professional wrestling company that, even though it only lasted for a short amount of time, managed to cultivate a small but really dedicated fan base. And they did this by highlighting some of the old and some of the new and wrapping it into one big Lucha Libre package. What is this wrestling promotion? Well, you're about to find out. Por qué? Esta es la historia de Lucha Underground. Please support this channel by subscribing, and you could support it even further by signing up over on my Patreon page, just like with Ron Hawthorne and Meiji Stray. Thank you and the rest of the Patreons for all the amazing support as you keep this channel going. Mark Burnett, creator and producer behind hit shows such as Survivor, The Voice, and Shark Tank, was looking to branch out into new territory, professional wrestling. He teamed with Hollywood director Robert Rodriguez's El Rey Network, a media brand founded in December of 2013. The following month, it was announced that Burnett's new project would be an hour-long pro wrestling show, debuting before the year was out, and it would primarily focus on Lucha Libre, as well as being done in conjunction with AAA. The original name of the show was Lucha Uprising before it was changed in August to Lucha Underground. Filming began in September in Boyle Heights, California, in a set that was designed specifically for the show. A month later, on October 29th, Lucha Underground would debut for El Rey Network, airing on Wednesday nights at 8pm. It would replay in Spanish just days later on November 1st on Unimas. Now, it's important to remember that at the time, AEW was still five years away and TNA had become a shell of its former self. And other companies like Ring of Honor were now seeing their top talents tearing it up in WWE, particularly in their developmental program NXT. And so, with America lacking a true competitive secondary wrestling promotion, some thought that the best strategy actually laid outside of America, oddly enough. And this didn't make sense since New Japan was beginning to gain some momentum stateside, so why not pick a professional wrestling style that hails from another country, but one that was a bit closer to home? especially since Lucha Libre had already been more integrated into American pop culture than Strong Style was. Although don't get me wrong, the show would also be sure to incorporate some familiar American talent too, like Johnny Mundo aka John Morrison aka, well, you get the point. Lucha Underground would also feature other previously known stars such as Chavo Guerrero, Jake Hager, and even Rey Mysterio. And of course it was so much more than that, as it had a lot of really great professional wrestling. And in addition, there was also a lot of things that you wouldn't find on WWE TV. TV, intergender wrestling, and some extreme hardcore stuff, but they usually only save that for when it really counted. All these things and more were brought into the format of the show, but at the same time, it never lost its Lucha Libre feel. Upon viewing, it was quite clear that this was not supposed to be your grandfather's Lucha Libre, at least not entirely, as this was supposed to be something new, something different, part soap opera, part professional wrestling, part Iron Chef. This was more like the Lucha Libre version of WMAC Masters. Now, one of the really unique things about the program was that it all centered around the authority figure, but unlike with Vince McMahon, this one would be a fictional one. The show was hosted by the wealthy and eccentric Dario Cueto, kayfabe owner and proprietor of Lucha Underground. The premise of the show was that as a youth, Dario craved violence and vowed to open a fighting league of his very own that saw the best fighters in the entire world compete against each other, and he would get to watch the mayhem unfold from his office right in front of the ring in his Aztec-themed temple. Right from the get, it was obvious that the pageantry would be dialed up to 11, with storylines that were completely over the top. Without getting too far into spoiler territory, the fictional elements went to places WWE normally didn't go to, such as some wrestlers being revealed to be undercover cops or being members of an ancient Aztec tribe, and this was just scratching the surface. Also, unlike WWE, Lucha Underground was treated more like a traditional television show, with the first season concluding with a two-part finale, which yes, meant that they did have an off-season, something that may not have actually been a good idea, but we'll be getting to that later on. Nevertheless, they were renewed for a second season that began production in the latter half of 2015, with season 3 also being confirmed before they even began filming season 2. And they began touring as part of the South by Southwest festival, something that was very unique for a professional wrestling show. But now, some of you may be wondering, where exactly did LU fit into the AAA brand? Well, it stood on its own as a separate promotion, similar to how NXT is today, but without the whole developmental part. Because while Lucha Underground was its own thing with its own titles, it still participated in AAA 
Channel A's Lucha Libre World Cup. Now, it could be said that the peak of the show came when it debuted on Netflix, as the streaming platform was riding high and had the audience numbers to give the promotion the kind of exposure that it needed, and many felt that binging the show was the best way to watch it. Then, in late 2017, Lucha Underground was renewed yet again for the 2018 season, but it would now be filmed in Los Angeles instead. And this wasn't good, as Lucha Underground didn't have a lot of the things that made it, well, Lucha Underground. This was followed by the formation of a partnership with Impact Wrestling, as the two companies held a joint event that aired on Twitch. However, producer Eric Van Wagenen said that budget concerns were now the biggest issue, and if they were going to have another season, the show would have to be rebooted on a lot of different levels. But alas, there was not another season, and Lucha Underground would quietly dissolve. How did this happen? Well, it all comes down to the financials, and they were handled really, really poorly. In February of 2019, King Cuerno, the current Santos Escobar, filed a lawsuit claiming that LU's contracts illegally restricted wrestlers from working in other promotions, even after the show's cancellation, which is something of a problem. And before that, it wasn't all that great either, as there were long breaks between seasons, and some wrestlers only would receive a few thousand dollars that was supposed to last them the entire year, despite being nowhere near enough to make a living off of. And Santos wasn't the only one, as several other wrestlers came together as well well and filed a class action lawsuit. The next month, the case was settled in favor of the wrestlers who were now allowed out of their contracts. Now, as for today, what would become the legacy of Lucha Underground? Well, after only a mere 39 episodes, the show still managed to shake things up in the world of professional wrestling. Not only did the previously mentioned Santos Escobar join the WWE, but many other wrestlers from LU did as well, such as Karrion Cross and Prince Puma, aka Ricochet. And as for the future stars of the AEW side of the line, Luchasaurus, Jack Evans, Angelico, Sunny Kiss, and perhaps the biggest breakout star, Pentagon Jr., would become All Elite after their sound was laid down by the underground. And that was just a short list of the many wrestlers that would go on to work for other promotions. Furthermore, LU would see a brief but unauthorized revival in 2020, with Major League Wrestling forming the Azteca Underground Stable, which consisted of former Lucha Underground talents. This led to plans to revive the promotion unofficially in 2021. Unfortunately, they were never able to secure a TV deal. And so the plans were scrapped. Partially. Because in December of that year, an event called MLW Azteca was held alongside the Crash Lucha Libre, another Lucha Libre promotion. This was followed by another event called Azteca Underground, which took place in 2022. When it's all said and done, Lucha Underground was the wake-up call that the industry needed, even though they do serve as just another example of being critically well-received and adored by its fans, but not having a large enough fan base to branch out beyond just being a niche audience amongst the already niche audience that is professional wrestling fans. Furthermore, it's also yet another example of how the wrestling business is first and foremost a business, and that when you forget about that, it's really hard to stay on air no matter how much your fans love you. But, looking back on it, this brief time period will always have left ripples throughout the entire industry, ripples that can still be seen today, even if they are coming from the underground. Well, there you go, the history of Lucha Underground. What are some of your favorite Lucha Underground moments? Let me know down in the comments, and please make sure to just subscribe to this channel and that you give this video a big like. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, Dave knows.